In our previous video, we were looking at hierarchical models, single, average, complete, and ward. So we're gonna finish up our discussion related to hierarchical models in this video, but we're gonna look at more than two variables. So in our previous version, we had looked at two variables. And so if we go in and look at our data here, we were looking at projected value of contract and company revenue to identify cohorts of potential customers. So all we had was two variables. In this particular video, we're going to do some cluster analysis with more than two variables, and we're gonna create a graphical representation of the cluster analysis called the dendrogram. And so you'll recall in the graph, the uh, data visualization um, flowchart we had looked at previously, let's see if I can just quick bring it up, Maybe yes, maybe no, here we go. So at this point in our videos, we've gone through most of these, the little the black ones that you see here that are the different types of data visualizations. What we're gonna do in this video is this dendrogram that's right here. So we're showing the association or relationship when we have more than three variables and they're either all ordinal or all ratio interval, we can create a dendrogram. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at ordinal data and we are going to do our hierarchical clustering or agglomerative clustering with our Likert scale survey questions and create a dendrogram. All right, so let's do that. All right, so we are in the middle of the workbook where we left off was practicing our hierarchical uh, analysis here. And you can see there's a practice problem for you here to create a ward linkage based on opinions questions. So in this case, we have ordinal scale questions, and in this case, question 18 and question 20 in data frame two. So data frame two here was the bargaining survey. And that was where we asked people questions to prepare for collective bargaining. So we were getting information, opinions from our union members. And so let's go back to that question set. And let's build a hierarchical, well, let's first just build the two dimensional. So we'll do that as our practice. We'll do our two dimensional here. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll get into um, multiple, more than two variables. So pause the video if you watched the previous one and take a moment, can you create the ward linkage with our ordinal data from data frame two? So question 18 was about, is the workplace safe? And question 20 was, is the workplace inclusive? So can we categorize our respondents based on how they answered those two ordinal type questions. Okay. Well, instead of copying and pasting all this, I'm gonna dump it all on top of this previous one. To do this, we need NumPy as NP and sklearn.cluster agglomerative clustering. We're simply gonna trade out the X's to the other data frame, question 18 and 20. And when we do that, we get a new array that looks like this. So notice in this case, these were five point Likert scale questions from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And so the first person agrees with both of them. The workplace is safe and the workplace is inclusive. Whereas this person strongly disagreed on both. All right, so that's the data that we have and we're gonna use that data to do some agglomerative clustering. And we'll do linkage equals ward. And perhaps we should plot the data first and see, you know, generally how many clusters we think. And then we'll create a loop later to figure out what it should be. So I'm just going to do this and move it up here. Okay, from seaport import, I'm just gonna remove the hue part so we can just look at the data without any colors. And this is data frame two, question 18, and data frame two, question 20. Doesn't matter which one you put on the X or Y axis, pick one for each. X axis here is safety, 
y-axis here is inclusive. Now, because this is Likert scale, when we plot it, it's not very exciting because one dot covers a lot of people and you can't quite tell. It's not as pretty as when we have interval or ratio data. Uh, so we can't quite see how many people these are, but we were looking for generally, what group is this? What group is this? What group is this? All right, we're gonna do some agglomerative clustering. We're gonna go, let's say there, you know, there's three locations, north, south, east. So maybe we have three clusters. Maybe there's three different opinions based on the three different locations. So maybe the idea is maybe there's three clusters to find. We're gonna, you do linkage equals ward. Okay, maybe because there's noise here. Let's run that. Here it is taking these data points and it's telling us if they belong to cluster zero, one, or two. And we can show this visually by changing this here to DF2 is 18 and DF2 20. I'm gonna switch it out. The hue is still gonna be this new cluster label. The x-axis was safety, and the vertical axis here was inclusivity. All right, find me some groups. All right, so it says here, maybe there's this group here that feels very negative about safety. Here's a group here that's very positive about both. And this group here is kind of middle of the road. So it's coming up with three groups based on that. Is three appropriate? Well, we could use our scores to figure that out, okay? And we could test a bunch of different ones. But what I wanna do here is go past this practice section that you just populated. And what if instead, let's create a loop. Let's create a loop to compare the different number of clusters. We'll do ward. We'll test a bunch of different clusters, not just three, but how about two, three, four, five, and six. And maybe let's also use this opportunity to not make the clusters based solely on the two variables, safety and inclusivity, but maybe let's also add in question 15 and question six. So question 15, let's see how much you can remember off the top of my, how much I can remember off the top of my head from, I gotta go find the original, uh, give me one second. I gotta go find the slides that have all the, uh, <laughs> the survey data in. Should have been prepared. All right, where did I put this stuff? I put it under exploratory data analysis. Theoretically. All right, come on. Show me the survey, all right. Question six, how satisfied are you with the current salary? So maybe we can identify groups based on their opinion about salary, so let's put in question six. And question 15, how satisfied are you with the location where you work? So let's do not just question 18 about workplace safe and 20 about inclusive, but let's throw two more variables in there as well. We could throw even more in because we have all these Likert scales. Uh, we just really need to keep them here all Likert, okay? All ordinal. Okay, so let's go in. So what we're going to do is we have question 18, 20, 15, and 6. We have, we're going to consider clusters, uh, two clusters, three clusters, four clusters, five clusters, six clusters. We're going to do link ward. To make all this run, we are going to need our agglomerative clustering to do our clustering. We're going to need numpy as np to format our, our um, variables. And then we're going to need all of our metrics so that we can do our comparisons. So we're going to import all of this. We're going to import all the things that we're defining ahead of time. And now let's create a loop. So we're going to start by creating an empty list. Let's just call it compare. And then for i in range, this is going to be the length of the number of clusters. So we're going to go through all of these. We don't even have to do this, range length. You could just do for i in number of clusters. 
like let's I'm just simplify it here for i in number of clusters so it's going to go through all of these two three four five six and then clusters equal agglomerative clustering it's going to say the number of clusters number cluster is going to be so we'll just make this equals i so the, what i'm changing here is rather than using the index locations we'll just have it pull the actual values and make this a simpler cleaner coding here so number of clusters equals i it's going to pull each one of these numbers pop it in here it's going to do ward for the linkage because that's what we defined it's going to fit it on our x data it's going to pull the labels it's going to run the scores and then it is going to let's just take this it is going to tell us the number of clusters and the scores and it's just going to repeat that okay all right and then we give we're going to output a data frame from that loop so we're going to have this empty list it creates called compare we're going to turn that into a data frame using pandas so are we running pandas here probably should import pandas as pd as well okay. And then we're going to name the columns and it's going to create that table number of clusters silhouette score the um, kalinsky herbert score and the davies bolden all right let's see if we can get the sucker to run and then output the table so our loop has calculated the silhouette the kalinsky harbits and the davies bolden for ward when there are two clusters three clusters four clusters five clusters six clusters Okay, what do we learn from this? Well, according to the silhouette score, the one it likes the best, the highest number goes to two clusters. The Kalinsky Harbutt score, remember it likes more clusters, but notice that it's given the highest score to two clusters. So that's, there must be the clearest separation here. And the Davies Bolden, remember, it likes the low, it, it, the lowest number is the best, so it actually likes four clusters. Okay, so based on this, we have one vote for four clusters, one vote for two clusters. Then we would say, okay, well, what makes more sense to our customers, or sorry, what makes most sense in terms of our decision making? And you know, four clusters, it doesn't tie to location because there were three locations. Um, so maybe we can find a meaning or something in just the two clusters those who like the location don't like the location maybe it's simple as that and we need to explore and drill down at more in terms of who that particular group is okay now to represent the breakdown uh, we create what is called a dendrogram a dendrogram looks like this this dendrogram starts here, everybody's in the same group, and then starts breaking up. And you can see here at the very bottom, this is every single survey participant. And so they fit into a cluster. And so then the decision becomes, where do we split the dendrogram? If we split it up here, then we have less clusters. If we split it down here, then we have lots of little clusters. To create a dendrogram, we're going to import numpy as np. We're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt to do our graphing. And then we're going to use from skippy.cluster, we're going to import hierarchy. And that is going to then create our dendrogram. So let's do that. Now, skippy.cluster import hierarchy is doing its own hierarchical cluster analysis, particularly in this. So we're essentially repeating the process with a different package here. So it's doing its own cluster analysis, but it should be using the same, um, well, we have to find for it the linkage, uh, but you can see that it's doing it all separate from, it's not tying back to uh, the previous calculations that we did. So the dendrogram here and this cluster analysis is all inclusive in this uh, and separate from the work that we did here, okay? So we're going to then define our X. It is an array. We use numpy to turn it into an array. Here we have our four questions that we're looking at from data frame two. 
we are going to define here that we're going to use hierarchy dot linkage and that's going to do our x data and then we have to define what type of linkage so is it single is it average is it complete here we're using ward and we'll make that equal to we'll call it z or z so we can simply then do hierarchy dot dendrogram on z and then plot the results and so what we get here is our dendrogram and as I said, we can look at where we want to split it in order to figure out uh, how many clusters we have. I think I might have pulled some pictures. Okay, yeah, here we go. So where we split it determines how many clusters we have. Okay. So for example, if we decide to do our split here, we have two clusters. Everybody who comes down from this blue line here on the left would be in one cluster, and everybody who comes down this right blue line, so all the green there, would be the second cluster. So when we see a recommendation of two clusters coming from those other methods, this is essentially how we're breaking it down. We have this big green group, and then we have this smaller orange group. If we're breaking it into four clusters, then we're breaking about here. And you can see here on the far right, this whole group here would be one cluster. Then we have a small green group here in the middle, and then this one green group on the left, and then your orange one. So we can see there's the four there. What you can't see that my face is hiding, so let me just move my face is that if we decided to break here, for example, we actually end up with 12 different clusters. So then you need to ask, okay, what makes more sense? Is there a space where the vertical lines on the dendrogram are not too close together? So the reason we would never pick this break here at 12 is that look at how close all of these lines are to each other. There's not a clear separation. So 12 is not a good number of clusters. As we move up to four and two, you can see there is a much bigger space dividing this line and this line and this line and this line. So that cluster breaks would make more sense. The other thing to ask ourselves is what are we going to do with this information? We're trying to solve a business problem, an organizational problem. So for example, with our bargaining survey, we're trying to identify different groups who need different things in our negotiations process. We're trying to identify groups of members uh, so that we can then fight for something for each of those groups to make sure that they are satisfied. If we're looking at a dendrogram for our customer relationship management uh, data, we're looking for, okay, this is a cohort of potential customers. There's a different cohort of potential customers. They probably need different things in terms of prices, in terms of service, in terms of how we appeal to them and market to them. And so we need to look at how many clusters can we handle? Too many clusters for our marketing and pricing, it's too complicated. Too many different categories of members that we're trying to appeal to in bargaining is too complicated. But if you just went with, oh, well, they're just one entity, one large group, then is there anything you can really fight for or provide to them that would satisfy them? So the idea is to try to find where is there a nice break and where does it make sense in terms of our organizational strategies and decision-making that we could do different things for different uh, groups of people?